Hi, welcome back. In this week's chapter assignment, we're going to continue learning how to improve a paragraph. In particular, we're going to talk about some techniques for making your paragraph more clear, more concise, and in general, just easier for your readers to understand what you're saying. One way to make your paragraph more concise is to simply delete, or as I like to say, weed out, any details that are not directly related to the topic sentence of your paragraph. As you start doing more writing, you'll discover that in the early stages of composition, it's easy to drift from your main topic. This is not really a problem in the beginning stages of your first draft, because it's always good to get a lot of ideas down on paper as quickly as you can. Just keep in mind that later on, you'll probably want to weed out some of these ideas to make your paragraph more concise. Another way to improve your paragraph is to arrange your supporting details in a logical order. This will make your writing much easier for a reader to comprehend and follow along. First, let's take a look at how to delete unrelated details in a paragraph. Here's an example of a first draft that I wrote. My main point or topic sentence is, Shopping for a new bicycle starts at home. From here I go right into the body sentences of the paragraph. Before you visit your local bike shop, think about which road surface on which you'll spend most of your time riding. Does this sound like it's directly related to the topic sentence? I think it does. How about the next sentence? Some bike shops provide free tune-ups for new customers. Now, this sentence is certainly related to bicycles, but it really doesn't have anything to do with my topic sentence, which is all about shopping for a bike. So I'm going to highlight this as a possible deletion. How about the next sentence? Will you be riding on city streets, paved bike paths, or off-road trails? Since this is a question that people should ask themselves before buying a bike, I'm going to say that, yes, this supporting detail is very much related to the topic sentence. How about the next sentence? Then research how bikes are designed for specific road surfaces. Again, this sentence is very much related to the topic sentence, so it also stays. How about, most cities have detailed maps of bike paths in your area. Now, this sentence is about biking, but it's not directly related to my topic sentence, so I'll highlight this as a possible deletion. How about this sentence? You will discover that manufacturers offer a variety of bicycle styles. The sentence is talking about bicycle manufacturers, so it's definitely related to my topic sentence about shopping for bikes, so it stays. Now let's go ahead and delete the questionable sentences and see how the paragraph looks. Shopping for a new bicycle starts at home. Before you visit your local bike shop, think about which road surface on which you'll spend most of your time riding. Will you be riding on city streets, paved bike paths, or off-road trails? Then research how bikes are designed for specific road surfaces you will discover that manufacturers offer a variety of bicycle styles. That sounds much better. Now let's take a look at how organization can help make your paragraph more clear and concise. Now keep in mind that a paragraph can be organized in three different ways. You can organize a paragraph by time. You can organize a paragraph by space. And you can organize a paragraph by importance. Let's take a closer look at each of these. When we organize by time, we're talking about a paragraph that explains a sequence of events, or in other words, a paragraph that tells a story. Organizing your paragraph by time is the perfect choice when writing about anything that includes a sequence of events. When we organize by space, we're talking about a paragraph that describes a place, a person, or a thing. The paragraph often refers to the senses in its supporting details, like how something looks, sounds, or smells. When we organize by importance, we're talking about a paragraph that makes its point gradually, by starting with the smaller details first and then building up to the most important detail at the end. 
Organizing your paragraph by importance is the perfect choice when writing to persuade or convince a reader to see your point of view. In writing and composition terms, this is called an argument. This type of paragraph also uses specific transition words to help the reader understand what the author is talking about, like above all, more important, one reason, and especially. In your textbook, you'll find some great examples for improving your paragraph using the techniques I've just mentioned. In this week's writing workshop, you'll be writing what's called a description paragraph. A description paragraph uses details that appeal to the senses, like sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. I've included a sample of a description paragraph that I wrote, which you can see by clicking the See My Sample link below. I'm also including a link to a worksheet that you can use to help develop your description paragraph. You might want to print this document or save it to your computer for reference as you write your paragraph. If you like, you can also type your notes and your final paragraph directly into the PDF form itself, and then submit that document to me for grading. I'll leave that choice up to you. If you decide to use the PDF form to complete the assignment, just make sure that you have a saved copy of the document somewhere on your computer. Let's take a closer look at the worksheet. Sometimes the best way to start work on a description paragraph is to simply make a list of the things you see, hear, smell, taste, or feel. This first step in the worksheet should give you plenty of details to work with as you develop the sentences of your paragraph later. The next step in the worksheet is to find transition words that not only help readers move from one sentence to the next, but also provide a better picture of where each item is located. Words like under, across, and below. Keep in mind that as you move into the more advanced writing courses at MCC, like Composition 1 and 2, your instructors might ask you to write longer paragraphs, somewhere between 12 and 14 sentences each. So to help you better prepare for these future courses, try to make sure that the paragraphs that you write for me are well developed and include at least 10 sentences. That includes an introduction sentence and also a conclusion sentence following the body of your paragraph. The grammar workshop for this week is all about using apostrophes. Apostrophes, much like commas, are one of the most troublesome parts of English grammar that students wrestle with. In fact, over the years, a lot of people have argued that we should simply eliminate apostrophes from the language entirely. That hasn't happened yet, so for now, it's still important to understand how to use apostrophes correctly in a sentence. If not, you could easily embarrass yourself when writing a memo, a report, or any document that other people will read. The good news about apostrophes is that the rules are fairly simple. There are only two instances where an apostrophe is needed in a sentence. Apostrophes used in contractions and apostrophes used in possessive nouns. For example, with contractions, an apostrophe takes the place of missing letters in a word. Dogs can't climb trees. Can plus not equals can't. Or, we're waiting for Tom. We plus are equals we're. With possessive nouns, an apostrophe indicates ownership. Tom's house is old. The house belongs to Tom. Iowa's farmland is rich. Farmland belongs to Iowa. Now, apostrophes and contractions are fairly easy to remember. However, remembering how to use apostrophes in possessive nouns can be a little more tricky. And that's because in the English language we have two different kinds of possessive nouns. Singular possessive nouns and plural possessive nouns. And wouldn't you know, each uses apostrophes in a different way. For example, that boy's dorm room. To show that a dorm room belongs to a specific person, we place the apostrophe before the letter S. However, if we talk about a dorm room belonging to a group of people, we place the apostrophe after the letter S. 
One of the most common mistakes people make with apostrophes is to place them in words that should never have an apostrophe to begin with. Under no circumstances should you ever use an apostrophe with the word its. For example, the cat loves its toy. Iowa has its beauty. Love has its rewards. Also, never use an apostrophe when you simply write plural versions of a word. For example, cats love to play with toys. Iowa has beautiful rivers. Love has many rewards. The grammar worksheet for this week will give you a chance to practice when and where to use apostrophes in a sentence. Well, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me through the Angel email. I'll see you next time.